But now, you know, before I even get in the room of being on radio, I'm an intern. Mm. So I'm going out there. I'm in Phoenix. You know, I'm from Wisconsin. It's summertime. It's 120 degrees. <laughs> I'm out there grabbing tents, tables, right, speakers, right. giving out squirts to people. And, you know what I'm saying? I've been putting the grind down, getting paid $10 an hour. Right. But I felt that there's something bigger to this than what I'm doing right now. Mm-hmm. And, and um, I, I stuck with it, bro. And I went from a promotion rep to being on the number one show that they ever had in Phoenix. Wow. You know, I went from nights to uh, afternoons, number one, and mornings. Wow. You know, from an intern from a whole nother place, you know, and didn't even think about radio or none of that. And it just blossomed to a lot of great relationships, you know, got me more confident and comfortable because I was with celebrities and people every day. Peace family, Will Roundtree here on the Full Time CEO podcast, The Shit They Don't Tell You where I interview influential individuals, businessmen, businesswomen, entrepreneurs, legends, moguls, and everything in between. Ooh, like that. <laughs> now, today we got a very special guest. But as I often say, all my guests are special. True that. And they're special because I get to handpick them. Mm. And for this particular guest, it's even more endearing for a couple different reasons. One, you're from my hometown. Let's go. Fall yo, we fall. putting on for Milwaukee right yes, now. Yo. So y'all might hear some lingo <laughs> that y'all not used to. That's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So y'all may have to go get the Urban Dictionary or Google or something. <laughs> but 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 I, a couple of things I want to say about my guest today. So we actually, uh, I got a chance to meet him through a mutual friend that we have. And it's actually uh, our barber. And he was like, yo, I got this guy that I need you to meet. He's from Milwaukee. I've been telling him about you, da 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 woo woo And as soon as I met him, it was like instant kindred spirits just aligned. And it's very rare you meet people that are just good people just in our day-to-day. But when you meet somebody that's not only a good person, but they're thorough, they uh, you know, just have a, a, a spirit of, of, of giving. And from day one, he treated me like he'd been knowing me since 1990 or whatever. Right. And anything he has going on, he always hit me up, be like, yo, bro, come through. I got you. We family, whoop de whoop, and all of that stuff. And, and it's just rare that you meet that because a lot of the times when, you know, you're in a place of affluence, you the plug mm-hmm. or you're, you know, making sure everybody have a good time. But one thing I could say, and it's not just because of this particular scenario, but when, when my brother hit me up, he like, bro, your money is no good here. And it's very rare you meet people who are like that, who just has such a giving spirit. So uh, without further ado, I got to introduce my good friend, uh, entertainer, yes. podcast yes. host. He done had songs and done hit the Billboard yes. charts. He done worked with some of your favorite artists, yes. favorite artists. This man had a, 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 a Billboard in Times Square, yeah. New York. Yeah. And guess who? Hat he was rocking. You know it. The full time CEO on, hat go. while we was in Times Square. So your boy got some media coverage out in to New do York it. too. Had so to. I definitely appreciate you, man. Yeah. I got to introduce my friend, yes. my brother, Plaz Brown. What's up, man? man? Hey, I- who <laughs> 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 made me cry? Will. Ugly cry. I- hey, man. Hey, I appreciate you, bro. That definitely, that means man. a lot coming from you, bro. You know, I can hear that from a lot of people, but certain people that say it where it really means a lot to you. And uh, I appreciate that, brother. No. Every last word. No, absolutely, man. Like I say, you don't find a lot of people that are just genuine. Yeah, yeah. Like, facts. you have people, they'll build with you because of what you got, mm-hmm. your access, or who you connected to. Yeah. But, like, it ain't never been any of that. It's always just been like, yo, bro, just come through and we just gonna build. Yeah, let's just come it, through and kick it, it and see what happens. Period. Yeah. And it's never felt like, oh, man, like, let me one-up him or this and yeah. that third. It was like, no, nah, man, like, if if I'm eating, you gonna eat. 100%. And it's been like that from day one, man. Man, that's what's so beautiful about it, man. Because you don't meet a lot of people you like that. Man. And when you do, I feel like you got to hold on to them. You know what I'm saying? Because right. it ain't a lot of us out here. And uh, just the fact that how we keep linking up, just right. like at the gym. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Las Vegas, two brothers from <laughs> Milwaukee. Right. You know what I'm saying? At the same time. Right, right. And then you like, bro, I got you. Let me help you out, bro. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So it's all written. It's already written. Definitely, man. But let's talk about Milwaukee. Man. Oh, let's talk about hey, it. Hey, yeesh. So when I first moved to Vegas, yeah. and people would be like, yo, where you from, man? I'm like, Milwaukee. They're like, huh? Yeah, yeah. What's that? 
There's black people there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on and see. <laughs> right, right. It ain't sweet. <laughs> no, nah, not it, at it's all. It's not happy days and, it's, it's and, not, and all of that when you go it there. Build credit, it builds um, character, man. It does, if you're from Milwaukee, and it's a lot of great people from Milwaukee that ain't came ne- from there and that's still there. And I feel like if you can make it in Milwaukee, you can make it anywhere. That's what I tell people because, see, in Milwaukee, we didn't have the Puff Daddies. No. Nah. We didn't have the Dr. Dre's. No, nah, we had the DRE, but not Dr. Dre, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you a bitch, you a tramp. You right, a man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, you really had to pull from the inspiration of within yeah. or our OGs or, you know what I'm saying, or just the pride. Because, like, one thing I learned about us being from Milwaukee, we got pride. 100%. We, we stamp. Big like, pride. Yo, I'm from Milwaukee. Sometimes too much, you know, <laughs> but yeah, we definitely got pride. Definitely, man. So so let's talk about Plaza and just, you know, your upbringing yeah. and just how the city reared who you've become today, man. Man, you know what? Um, I'm from uh, Capitol. I'm off Capitol. 13th of okay. Capitol. Grew up. Um, Kingsby family. Um, man, whole host of cousins and brothers. Big family. Right. So, you know, everywhere we was at, it was family. Yeah. Um, Moved out to Villard. Then mom's got a nice house and said, we going to move on up. We went out to Silver Spring. Oh, man. You couldn't tell us nothing, man. Yeah, I'm out the hood. (laughs) But I'm still in the hood, though, because I went to school at Parkman. You know what I'm saying? And I went to Madison High School. And I used to hoop. Okay. People didn't even know I had the Jerry curl out there. <laughs> well, I had the curl out there mixing was it, it up. Was it the newbie? Of course. Because oh, you already. <laughs> I was getting dipped. Did you know? Did you get your? Did you have? No, nah, I always, you know, I always kept the low cut, man. I couldn't. I, but see, here's the thing. I had moved to Mississippi. Okay. Okay. In in in, in around like 2000. I mean, excuse me, about 1994. Okay. So I missed the whole curl. All right, so era. All right, well. Yeah. Too bad, Will. You would have been <laughs> be- you would have been buttered up. <laughs> hey, it's funny though, man. I used to be in a real life full five on five with a Jerry curl, bro. Like AC Green out there hooping. <laughs> but uh yeah, man, um come from a family, man, a tight family, man. Um, we all got good hearts, but you know, sometimes the alcohol and stuff can get a lot mm. of people out of character. I Definitely. feel like that's the one thing in my family that you know, that makes us a little different is right. that that alcohol demon. And um, my whole life, man, was to always break that curse in my family. Definitely. So um, I worked hard and I said, I ain't going to look for so-and-so to do it. I'm going to do it. Right. And uh, I'm the oldest. So, you know what I'm saying? I went out on faith and moved to uh, Arizona. And that's when the journey really began. Definitely. Definitely. Yep. And, and, and I remember, you know, when we first met, just you sharing a little bit about your story and your yeah. journey. You moved out there and you didn't have, Nothing. you wasn't who people see today. No, no. When I moved, bro, I left with $1,700. Yeah, more than me when I left. Okay. I had, I had 500 Oh, okay. Yeah. Three outfits. <laughs> you may have still be. I think I had two pair okay. of pants and a shirt. Okay. A laptop. I definitely didn't have that. And a, and a camera. Uh, nah, I said, I you put me that. anywhere on earth with a camera and a laptop, mm, I'm going to survive. That's what's up. And from that point, bro. You see me now, man. Right. It was a lot of ups and downs, but at the same time, I'm living proof to anybody that, yo, if you just keep trying, you something going to happen for you. It has and to. if you have a good heart, you know what I'm saying? It's going to happen. Right. You just can't give up. And don't measure yourself up to the next person. Do what you do. Right. Tunnel vision. Man, let's talk a little bit about Milwaukee before we jump to yeah. you moving on the West Coast. Like, because... And then we jokingly talk about people like, oh, where's Milwaukee? And mm-hmm. you know, black people, this, that, and the third. And I think since the emergence of the Milwaukee Bucks, people yeah. are starting to pay more of attention. Yeah. But what is it about Milwaukee that you think instilled this, this, this grittiness in you, man? Oh, man. It's just how you come up. You know, it's like you actually got to have that to survive. Because if you don't, you kind of look down on as weak right. coming from where we at and um. I was out promoting, doing music, you know what I'm saying? I had a group called Union Entertainment where we did hip-hop. We did comedy at the Onyx for 10 years straight Mm -hmm. with T-Dot Midwest Comedy Night. So I was out there and seeing people. So you got to almost have certain type of persona to even just make it or else you're going to get taken advantage of. And um, that right there built me up to to not be scared to walk in a room with nobody, no matter where I'm at, what city, what state. I feel comfortable because I didn't did it with the toughest, the right. roughest. Yeah. You know, so that's what that did for me, man. And then it showed me, um, you know, where you can come from. Right. 
you know, shit, man, we came from nothing. Rats and roaches. Right, right. You know you what I'm saying? 13th and Capital? 13th and yeah, Capital. definitely. You know what I'm saying? The trenches over there. Who were some of your influences coming up from Milwaukee? Because as we mentioned, we didn't have the big time yeah. moguls that we could look to. Right. Whether it was sports. Yeah. I mean, we had, what, in the 80s, the Sidney Moncrief, the Paul Pierce. <laughs> Todd Day. Or Todd Day. <laughs> Tim oh, excuse me. <laughs> uh, Percy Pierce. I think that was Paul name, Pierce. But Paul Pierce. No. It, All right, let's the Bucks get it. from the '80s. Okay, I'm thinking about yeah. the '80s Bucks, but but yeah, we didn't have those big time no, names. We and didn't. So, who were some of the people that that you were able to admire uh, coming up in a city? Because social media wasn't around. Yeah, it wasn't all of those things. Um, as as far as music, um, Cuckoo Cow was definitely mm. like somebody who I always looked up to, and um, it was funny because the older I got and more into the game, I got I actually got to know him and meet him as being a brother. He's right. like actually a inf- a big part of my story wow. because he's the, one of the people who connected me to somebody that made the connect. So he was one of the people, um, and it was a man named Gary Childs. Um, he he wasn't in the industry or nothing like that. He ran the MPS uh, recreation program in Milwaukee. That's Milwaukee Public School System. Yeah, he okay. ran that whole organization and where he took in a lot of kids. You know, he gave us jobs. We played Summer Stars, you know. He, he, he took me under his wing like a father. Mm. And, um, he passed away, uh, rest in peace, Gary Childs. But he instill, he put in me how to be a man when my own father kind of didn't. You know what right. I'm saying? And uh, I always look back to those moments to where he gave me a job. He would be tough on me. You know, he put me in the area to be successful. He took me out of the streets. That's why those recreation programs is so important that I feel like they need to keep in the inner city because I'm a living proof of that. Right. You know, it took me in the game room. You know, I was in the game room all day. I was at North Division playing basketball. You know, I wasn't in the streets doing bad stuff. So Gary Childs was one of the people when um, 100% my mom. Mm, that's you that's know? dope. Now, you know we can't skip over Cuckoo Cow. Yeah, no, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Know, and, and I just, he had a big record. <sighs> and I think it really, at that time, opened up people's eyes to be like, where is this Milwaukee place at? 100%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I was so. just with a guy from the Bay Area. He sung my projects all the way through. Big, it was a big was record. Like, what? And then when I heard the East Coast rappers getting on the remix, yeah. and then he went to uh, Rap City in the basement yeah. when he was on there, I was like, man, and it made you proud. It did. Like, yo, somebody from Milwaukee. I looked up to Cal. Still do. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Great person, man. You know, great. Artist, but even better person. Definitely. You know, he even took me on tour with him a couple times in Miami when he was out there. And he just showed me, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just thinking back, like, man, I was a kid listening to my projects, and now I'm with him. Right. You know, right. and he's showing me love. So, man, much respect to that guy, man. Uh, I think people need to show him a lot more respect than they do. A lot, yeah. a lot of our uh, people from Milwaukee, because we it's full of greats. It is. Full it of is. greats. It is. Tony Neal, you know, Homer Blow, it's it's just the full legends, of greats, man. man. Legends, legends out there that's put it down. And uh, I feel like sometimes, someday, somebody got to do something big for them guys because they deserve it. Definitely. So now we got a new legend out of Milwaukee, Plies. Ooh, I like <laughs> what you said, baby. <laughs> so he moved to the West Coast. Yes, sir. You know, you moved out there with $1,700. <laughs> Yeah, a couple hundred more than me. And I started. <laughs> I ain't tell you what I did with that seventeen hundred. Spent fifteen hundred on the car. The engine went out as soon as I got to the crib. Bro. True story. It, hey, we done all been down oh. that path, man. And so you move out to the West Coast. Yeah. Uh, what? How was that process in yeah. the beginning? Because a lot of times people look up like, man, it, it had to have been easy. For yeah. You. Hell no. Far from easy. I feel like I tell this to a lot of people. If you move, like when you move from a certain place, like. Milwaukee to a bigger city. Get yourself about a year to a really, minute. yeah, you know, to settle in because it's not easy, but it's always worth it. Um, when I moved out there, I moved with my uncle Dale, rest in peace. He took me in, and he was like, uh, "Look, man, you can do your thing. You grown though." He's like, "I be at work all day." I'm like, "Cool." I get in the house, the motherfucking lights off. <laughs> He's like, "I'm at work all day." <laughs> If you want them on, put put some money in the box. Mm. If you don't know about Phoenix, they got these cards right. where you put your money on the, to light the house. You don't oh, go wow. to the, uh, yeah. So you got to go to the grocery store, put $20, $30 on there, boom, power your shit up. 
But the crazy thing about it, he was so cheap. He like, I see you use five dollars <laughs> worth of power. I'm like, Bro. <laughs> but uh, man, he he showed me the finer things, man, because he was always on this stuff, man. He uh he actually um had fostered a lot of kids too, mm-hmm. man, and um my dad brother, and he just showed me like this is what you can do, nephew. Right. And um uh, from that point on, bro, I was there for what two three months, and I got my own crib, and it was up wow. and since since wow. then. What, what was the mindset when you moved out there? Because, you know, a lot of times when we move, yeah. we're usually running yeah, and yeah. trying to escape. We think the move is going to change. Yeah. But obviously, for you to be able to transition within two months, yeah. your mindset was a little bit more mature and different. Yeah. So what was that that going in? And where did that come from? Was it the OGs you were around and just having people who really pushed you and thrusted you into to, to wanting better? Simple. My kids. Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's no other, that nothing else. You. you know what I'm saying? That's the biggest motivation for me because, right. like I said in the beginning, my whole mission in life is to break the chain. And uh, my kids is very important, and they they deserve it. You know That's what I'm right. saying? So I said, if I leave, I'm going to do something serious. Right. You know, I'm not leaving to go kick it, go have fun. This is the motivation. And because I did that, I was tunnel vision, bro. You know, and it was so crazy because I was moving at a, a nice pace, but it felt like I was lapping them. Mm. So coming from Milwaukee, you know, we zero opportunity. You know what I'm saying? We go somewhere where it's opportunity. And I'm like, oh, man, for real? I could do this? And it just was like, man, uh, it just started forming and building up. And I went from um, this how Cuckoo Cow got in my story. is um, It was a guy by the name of Kevin Reed who did parties in Phoenix. And uh, Cuckoo Cow was like, that's my boy. Hit him up. You know what I'm saying? He can help you in the club scene. I'm trying to push music at this right. time. I ain't even thinking about radio or nothing. So I hit him up. He said, hey, man, uh, I do my own stuff. You know, I do my own pictures and videos, but you can come down and do it for free. I'm like, damn, for free? All right. So I came down there. He let me do it for free. And in the process, I met Power 98.3 wow. that night. And because of that night, everything started off. And if he would have said, nah, man. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have did that. And that right. kicked off my whole career in radio. Right, right. So so before we get to the music, radio. Yeah. And you transition to that. What has that done for you? Because the dope thing, and, and I think Luda was also in radio. Oh, my big influence. So yeah, you get definitely. to see both sides oh, of the spectrum. Yeah. How has radio helped you with your oh, career? Oh, man. man? Every, it did everything for me because, you know, I'm coming from the side of an artist. I'm on the other side of the microphone. I'm touring. I'm doing shows everywhere. But now, you know, before I even get in the room of being on radio, I'm an intern. Mm. So I'm going out there. I'm in Phoenix. You know, I'm from Wisconsin. It's summertime. It's 120 degrees. <laughs> I'm out there grabbing tents, tables, right, speakers, right. giving out squirts to people. And, you know what I'm saying? I've been putting the grind down, getting paid $10 an hour. Right. But I felt that there's something bigger to this than what I'm doing right now. Mm-hmm. And, and um, I, I stuck with it, bro. And I went from a promotion rep to being on the number one show that they ever had in Phoenix. Wow. You know, I went from nights to uh, afternoons, number one, and mornings. Wow. You know, from an intern from a whole nother place, you know, and didn't even think about radio or none of that. And it just blossomed to a lot of great relationships, you know, got me more confident and comfortable because I was with celebrities and people every day. When it's your job, you know, it's your job. And um, gracefully, I got on air. And when I got on air, it was a wrap. Right. Did you ever go through that period and really look at and examine the fruits of your labor and be like, man, I'm from Milwaukee and, I, and I've created this? Yeah. Uh, not until recently. Okay. Because I'm so focused on trying to keep going. I like accomplishments. I love it. But I'm always trying to figure out the next, the next, the next. Sometimes that's a, you know what I'm saying, a bad thing. But mostly that's what keeps me going. Right. Because, I mean, I love the accomplishments. It's great. But... I'm always like, let's see what we could do next. Let's do some more. You know what I'm saying? But looking back, uh, I think I was on the field with the 49ers and we was playing against the Green Bay Packers in the um, NFC Championship game. And I'm on the field doing photos. And I'm like... Is this when Colin torched us? And- I, I No, I was there for that. Okay, but okay. this is the the year the Niners and the Packers played okay. and to go to the Super Bowl. And um, I'm just sitting there and I'm like, hey, I'm from Milwaukee. Because it didn't dawn on me to the, the guys who was doing the photos from Green Bay was saying, yeah, I'm from Milwaukee. And I'm like, oh, I got on the night. Oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I'm like, oh, okay. So 
that was one of the big moments right there when I had a time to reflect. And I'm in that big, big stadium. It's thousands of people around. I just took a breath. And uh, one time I honored my, I, uh, when my mom passed from breast cancer, <clears throat> I um, raised a lot of money. And um, I paid for everything. And uh, the money that I had left over, I donated to the American Cancer Society mm. at a 49ers game. So they let me go on the field with the pink ribbon oh, and honor dope. my mom. Like, it was a lot of people out there. And that, that was one of the times, too, where I was like, man, you know what I'm saying? They had the, the damn jets fly over, oh, you know wow. what I mean? It was a tribute. And it, that's when, you know, it just touched me, man, because I know I felt her with me, bro. Right, right. You know, and then, you know, that was one of them times, bro. Right, right. So let's 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 pivot just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, some adversities. Mm -hmm. You know, what were some of the things? Because I think a lot of times people think, you know, they, well, especially with social media, people mm -hmm. only see highlights. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, what are some of the obstacles that you did have to overcome? Were they mental? Were they actually real roadblocks that you have to deal with? People, you know, gatekeepers. What were some of those things? I got a quick answer. Three kids, four kids, three baby mamas. <laughs> <laughs> That's one right there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> on a serious note, man, right. um, it's just, you know, I think my the toughest thing, man, is being a parent these mm -hmm. days. You know what I'm saying? You try to get it perfect, but we ain't perfect. Right. These kids come to be teenagers, you know what I'm saying? And you want them to be a certain kind of way, but then you got to kind of sit back and let them be who they are, right. you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it hurts you to do it, but, you know, that's one of those things. And then, you know, the death of my mother and my father was something, you know, that I think I felt like my life just reset it. You know, it just was like, you know, everything. I, it was it was just a great reset, which I felt stronger in a weird way afterwards. Right. And, um, you know, it just made me think more about what I'm doing and really get to family, you know, like my immediate family, what I mean to them, because they meant this to me. And without that, where would I be at? Right. So I really focused and buckled down on my family. And then, you know, you always get the people that's hating, but that don't do nothing but fuel me. Really so I'll be like, come on, hate. Right. But right. half of the time, it's only from people that you knew coming back up. Mm. It's not really people that you acquainted, you know, when you move away and stuff right. like that. And I ain't to say just uh, people in Milwaukee, but I mean, just like family and stuff like that who may still view you as the young... The knucklehead. Yeah, who you know what I'm be, saying? Yeah. When you was little cuz, then you come around and they trying to say little slick stuff and you right. got to be like, yo, buddy, you know what I'm saying? This ain't that. Right. Like, calm down, you know? Right. So, um, besides that, I'm pretty much chill, man. I'm pretty much uh, to myself. You know, I got the same circle I've been having for years. Um, big family, man. I got two, two grown boys, you know? They like my best friends, you right. know what I'm saying? And then I got two little girls, and my wife is my best friend. Right. You know, we do everything together. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, it's that. And then, you know, my boy Honesty, who here with me, and um, Logic, and that's pretty much it, and yeah. Sean and John. Right, right. So so you got the music thing, yeah. and, you, and we'll touch oh, on yeah. that. You uh, did top of the top in, in radio. Yeah. So now let's talk about music. Yeah. Let's talk about music. Is that your first... Your it's first my passion? first love, but video is what pay me. Mm. So I was like, damn, I got to put rapping to the side when I did radio right. and everything because, that, you know, I rap. Everybody like, okay, cool, done. Right. You know, so I had to really put my love into video. I love video, right. but rap was like something that I did to just like that therapy. Mm. You just go in the booth, you chill, you with your homies, you know, ride around, listen to your music. Like, right. yeah, you know, and I always love to perform in front of people. Okay. You know, I my my dream is to perform in front of 20, 30,000 people. You know what I'm saying? When I go to concerts, all I do is imagine myself back there mm. like, ooh, I can't wait. Right. Because I know it's going to happen. Right. It's just when, you know what I'm saying? So music, I would definitely say, is my first love. And I, I wanted, I stopped for a while. And I said, you know what? A lot of people didn't take me serious. So I said, let me do it for real. One, at least one good time. Right. And that's where I'm at right now. No, and it and it definitely shows, man. And I mean, every time that, you know, I get an opportunity to hear the new music that you're dropping, I'm like, man. And it makes me proud to be from the same hometown as you because, like you say, we don't get a lot of representation or we'll get people who made it out, but they won't claim Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I hate to see that. Yeah, oh, man. that grinds my gears. Oh, me too, Like, man. bro, come on now. That's the inspiration. <laughs> like, we That's still what know we your need. Grandmama. Facts. <laughs> Why don't you go see her? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, bro, that guy, that I don't like that, man. Yeah, definitely. And so, so you've had some success. You've been able to uh, work with several artists. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of those relationships with the features you've been able to have mm -hmm. come from radio? Your radio? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Like uh, my single company with Luke Nasty um, definitely came from radio. Uh, every time Luke came out to Phoenix, you know, we we kick it when he was dropping on um, on the way and. Okay. Um, it was this other hit. I might be. Okay. They'd come there in the town, and we'd kick it. We'd be on spring break, and I told him like, "Bro, I do music." He like, "I got you." But you know, that's the a lot Hollywood of people talk. be like, All right, yeah. "Yeah, you know what I'm saying." But he was like one of the people after radio who I hit, and I'm like, "Bro," and he said, Psst, "I got you," mm. and it was just like that. You know what I'm saying? That easy, right? And that became my single, right? And and until one of your earlier points. You have a good heart, yeah. so that reciprocates back when yeah. pe when you are asking 100%. for those, you know, returns 100%. from people. And so, and one of the things too that I just admire about you is like you're not scared to ask mm -hmm. of something from people, mm -hmm. no but, doubt. You know, it, but for a lot of us, especially as black men, mm -hmm. we, we're, we're scared to do that. Yeah, like if I ask you for a favor, I might feel like, oh, that's gonna yeah. make me a lame. Yeah, no, I'm not because I know that anybody that I'm around. They could ask me to sound, you know, that's why right. it, the important thing with me is keeping yourself around people that's like you, Period. keeping yourself around the energy that's like you, because I got to feel comfortable, comfortable around you to be able to ask you, you yeah, know what true. I'm saying? So that's why you around me, right? you know, if not, you shouldn't probably be around me if I ain't comfortable to just ask you for a favor on something that you do anyway, right? you know what I'm saying? So, and it was reciprocated the same way when he was there. I did a free videos for him. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Just looked out like, yo, you need a video? God got you. You know, right. easy. All right. And so from there, the music, you've built relationships yeah. to now you on Times Square Billboard. Damn! <laughs> it was crazy, too, because I was trying to get out there to see it, man. And uh -huh. then I had something going on. And the guy said, well, we can only keep it up one more day. I was like, please. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. Shout out Flossie, man. He made that happen. Um, put my single company up there. Um, and from that point, it's crazy because I was watching to see if my social media would go up. Right. My my social media didn't go up, but my Spotify and um, Apple Music went mm. up. So it was definitely something that worked out for right. me and helped me out because company is is doing really good right, right now. So man, it was great, man. And then. When I met you at, when we talked at the barbershop right. and I was like, yo, Will, I got this song, bro. I want to show you the cover. Is you cool with it? <laughs> I had already had in mind because I got so much respect for you. You know Thank what you, I'm man. saying? And I want to do something to show my respect to you without even asking you. Right. Like, yo, Will, what you think? Right. And the fact that you was like, yeah, bro, and I'm going to put in all my stuff for you. Right. I said, ooh, I got something else for Will. <laughs> I ain't even tell you. I said, ooh, wait till we see it on Times right, Square. Right, and right. Uh, that made me feel good because I was able to do something too. You know what right. I'm saying? That's what it's all about. 100%, man. 100%, bro. No, nah, because it felt like I made it too. For, for you know real. We did, it's, though. We, we did make it, You know it, what man. I'm saying? We from the same struggle. Right. That's why I'm happy to come sit down here and do this with you because even you telling your story I went to one of your seminars and um, I was like, damn, that sounds familiar. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we talked about that after the yeah, event. Yeah, after the event. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then that's when I met Melly. <laughs> Shout out Melly. Good Brother guy, man. Melly. I got nothing but love for Definitely, King man. Melly, man. Dude got some fire, fire clothes, designer shoes. Everything, man. Y'all don't know. I don't know if I can do this on the show, but get <laughs> yeah, at King that. Melly, man. My guy. <laughs> yeah, definitely, But uh, man. we met that day, and uh -huh. uh, bro, from that point, you showed me nothing but love. I said, ah, oh, Will, cool. All right. And um, I had heard about you from Honesty, actually, because Honesty's in the real estate and the right. credit game. And he was like, bro, it's a good brother from Milwaukee. I trust his judgment. Right. I've been knowing him for years. When he say that, you know what I'm saying, my attendance is open. So from the moment I met you, Everything he said was 100% spot on. No, 100 real talk. And I got to give and salute honesty, man. Oh, yeah. One oh, night yeah. we had went out, you know, <laughs> of course, we did it big. And I'm like, let me go to the bathroom. He was like, man. And he was like security for me. Oh, I yeah. felt good. I was popping Too my Too bad collar. he can't fight, though. He, was, nah, he probably take the first hit for you. Hey, <laughs> nah, he he, he would have took the hit. And I would have at least made sure he was good. For but, sure. But, but no, just but that just was that's just a testament to the people that you have around you. And that was like, damn, like, Plaz yeah. really got some dope individuals around him. And, and it again, it just made me feel good because 
I, I feel like I'm an extension of what you've created and the people you've created around you, man. So, sure. and it's just always been kindred. Like I say, every time we linked up, whether it was 100%. directly or indirectly, yep. and like you say, just happenstance being at the same gym. Yep, crazy, ain't it? <laughs> you know, it's, it's all good energy, man. I love it, bro, man. It's a pleasure to be able to call you a friend and a bro. Likewise. You know what so, I'm saying? Definitely. So let's talk about your podcast. Ooh, you know. the laboratory with me, P L A Z. Let's get it. And and, and so in. I love some of the dialogue you guys have. Thanks. It's like comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like when, because I've done interviews so right, much, right. Um, I feel like people don't want to come and just talk about themselves. They want to do like some, you know, feel like they're actually kicking it. Right. So our environment is more of a chill, kicking environment. We watch videos, talk sports. You know, I talk a little bit about what the guests got on, going on. But we get into a show atmosphere right. where we all have fun. Right. So it's like a kicking it session. Yeah. And I love to do it, man. Yeah. It's, it's going, it's... This is the second season right now. Um, I have some great interviews. Uh, a lot of performers out here from Las Vegas that's in the shows because I want to start off with a lot of local, okay. you know, people out here that's doing things. So I've had a lot of big local guests like Mark Murray Sawchuck. Um, I just had, you know, Sean from uh, Sean and John is my co-host okay. on the show. And he know everybody in the book. So, <laughs> I mean, we even have adult film stars on the show. Oh, wow. And it's crazy what you kind of, you know what I'm yeah. saying, conversations yeah, you can right. have with them kind of. You know, superstars. So it's been good, man. Sports. Um, we get uh rappers. You know, spit your boot, your your music, whatever, man. It's just an open format of a fun show and a good kicking it time. Definitely making making them feel comfortable. Yeah, exactly, and having a good time, man. And um, I can't wait to this next season. We're gonna have Will on there, oh, right? Hey, Ooh. hey, hey! Y'all get sauced up on there. <laughs> Sauced up and oh, bossed man. up. They might learn some new oh, stuff about me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Will, come on. We got to give them some Milwaukee lingo before we get out of here. What you got for them? Let me see. Mm, what we used to say? Let, let me see. Say. Ribbon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Phoenix. I'm like, are oh, you trying to rib me? They like, huh? I'm like, rib? Like, rib? They like, a rib? I'm like, oh, shit. It was crazy, though, when you move from the Midwest to the West Coast, right. you got to be careful what you say. You do. Because something can mean something totally different. different, man. And um, I was <laughs> I was saying so many things, and they look at me like, "Hmm." Huh? I'm like, "Oh, that's some Milwaukee shit, man." <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Don't don't. I'll tell you one. What when I first moved to West Coast, and I was like, "Man, quit jacking, jacking." And it was like, "What? <laughs> what jack? Like I don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> You like no, no, like you just you like forget it, bro. Like it's the new word for capping. Yeah, yeah, or the exactly. Old word for capping. Oh for man, know, I, man, I feel like I'm too old to use the new <laughs> words now, man. I learned it from my son. Me too. My son said, "Dad, that's cap." I said, "Who you think you is, James Harden? <laughs> Don't say that to me." Like, no, nah, no disrespect, but yeah, man, I just learned what TBH means. TBH. When you texting somebody and it said Text to, to be honest. To, oh, okay. I just learned that. I, me too. Shit. My son be sending me. I'm like, son, TBH, what does that mean? Huh? To, to be, be honest. honest. Okay, well. So, so if I text you, I'm like, hey, plus TBH. Yeah. Like that food wasn't that good. Okay. I, 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 I'm glad you're telling me now. I'd be like, man, Will must be sauced up, man. <laughs> man, that's what's up, man. This. It's a good time, Will, exactly, man. I appreciate man. you having me on, Absolutely, man. Absolutely, It's a great man. place, great setup, man. Exactly. I love the interview feel, man. Right. I'm, I'm happy to be here, man, bro. Hey, we, we happy that you came, man. Let's go, man. So what, what's what's next for, for, the, for the legend? All right. First, I can't even get past. I'm going to uh, London in a couple weeks, so okay. that's that's all my mind on. But next... um. Se the season three of my new my show, The okay. Laboratory, all new rebranding. We're gonna come with a lot of different guests. Um, and then I'm dropping my album, Drop Top Music. Just like that. Yeah. Oh, it's going down. Where the release party gonna be at? <sighs> Probably in my house. Okay. The, I know the, the turn lab. up gonna be crazy. Oh, we're gonna have a I already real good know how, it's gonna how, be very how we very, do it. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna keep that. I'm gonna let you know about that, Will. That's gonna be invite only, man. <laughs> right. That's gonna be a crazy right, night, man. Right. But yeah, I'm dropping that drop top music. Uh, I got uh, DJ Luke Nasty, King Los, who I feel like mm -hmm. is one of the best one lyricists the best ever, ever. You know ever, what I'm saying? Definitely. That's like, I'm like, dude, I got a song with the GOAT. <laughs> Two songs, actually. Um, then I got um, Yuck Mouth on that thing. From then the I got, yes, sir, from the Loonies. I got uh, Mr. Fab on mm -hmm. there. Uh, I got the Hoodies. Two guys from New York. Okay. I don't know if anybody know, but those guys, psh, they going to the top, bro. Um and then Miller, um, Honesty, and you know, it's, it's Cuckoo Cal as well, mm, you know what I'm wow. saying? So it's going to be a great album, man. Drop Top Music man, coming soon. The subtitle of that album should say Legends. Ooh. I 
I might have to get a royalty for that one. Uh, I got you. I got you. It's on camera. <laughs> Definitely, man. Well, how can people follow you? How can they stay up to date with everything Definitely. that you got going man, on? Man, all you got to do is type in I-A-M-P-L-A-Z. That's I am Plaz. A lot of people get me mixed up with Plaz, Plaz, Plaz. My name is Plaz. You know what I'm saying? My right. government name. So if you type in P-L-A-Z, that's going to be me. Apple, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, everything, man. Check us out. Get familiar. P-L-A-Z, shout out my family, Union Entertainment. Let's go. Man, y'all make sure y'all support my brother. Yes, Not sir. Not just because, you know, he my friend, my brother, but he's actually dope and just a good-spirited individual, man. And how could you not want to see somebody with his spirit not win? Come on, man. <laughs> 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 hey, we may have to write a short or something, Let's man. do it, like, Will. We, let's, we I'm putting it out it. in the universe. Let's do it. Definitely putting Done it deal. out in the universe. And so we appreciate y'all uh, tapping in with us yes, today sir. on the Full Time CEO Woo! Podcast. The shit they don't tell you where mm -hmm. I interview influential individuals, That's me. entrepreneurs, That's businessmen, me. women, moguls. Woo! And of course, we got the legend in the building. Yeah. PLAZ. Shout out my dog, Young Gim, for the connect. Hey, y'all heard it first. So make sure y'all follow, subscribe, uh, 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 comment, share all that dope stuff. Definitely. Until then, I'll see y'all at the top. Peace. Peace.